I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. That's right. For the record, you ain't trying to grow, then it's done for you. That's right. For the record, lab on me going all the way. All the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to waste. Good morning, my beautiful budding bean counters. How are you doing today? Hoping everything is well. And by bean counters, I'm wondering if any of you are ever interested in getting yourself into finance anytime soon. If you do, you're going to need to know how to tie the right tie. So instead of just getting myself all ready today beforehand, I thought I'd help you all out with a couple old stock doctor tips of the trade. Now, remember, you got to tie a proper tie knot. The key is your distance, right? So you're going to go down somewhere, depending on the shirt that you have. But you're going to go to right around your one, two, three button, third button. Don't count the next button. That doesn't count. So go about three, three and a half buttons down, depending on your shirt, your body length, and your tie. What you're doing is you're trying to aim for the top of your belt buckle um, for your distance of your tie. That's the official, that's the official distance. Now, now you got to know it's important to not do... The one, two, over and through, tie knot. One, two, over and through, that's not. What you wanna do is a Windsor, not a full Windsor, that's very pretentious, All right? You wanna do a, a regular roll, they call it a half Windsor. And, right, we've got our tie length, right? That's your key to your start, right? Wrap over, let's let the, um, unfortunately I got auto exposure on this particular cam, so. Sometimes it flashes, but nothing I can do about it, right? So make sure I got it down. It's been a little while since I've had to do it. I live in the jungle. So one wrap. Let's move this mic down here. Let's see, let's see it good. One wrap. Then you go up and in for a wrap around the left-hand side, right? That's the half Windsor. If you did a full Windsor, you'd also wrap it around this side as well. You don't want to do that. So, then you take this over. Now, this is the part. So, you've, you've got it wrapped around that side. You loop over. Now, this is all in one movement. You don't want to pull the whole tie through and then try to stuff it into the knot. This is all in one movement, right? So, you get here. Jam it up with your finger. Index here, right? Then you just open up the little pocket you've just wrapped around and jam her in. Just like that. All right, pull the tie on through, and then you get everything kind of righteous, right? You want that knot to be nice and triangular, and you want a little pinch, you can see here, a little pinch right in there as you tighten it up. Now, like I said, letting the exposure get correct, like I said, watch this, comes together a little bit of magic. I never do the top button. I think you let the tie do the top button. I think the uh, top button's a little pretentious as well, as along with the half Windsor. You can see, see you get yourself a nice little knot there. Up down the shirt. Get everything. Try not to look like a mannequin. Loosen that tie up a little bit. I got no boss to please. And that's how you tie a tie. Now, most people know that for an interview. When you have to do it every single day, it becomes a hobby. All right, beautiful people. Very good. Very good. So let's go ahead and take a look at the futures market. There we go. How the tune's doing so far? How's the mic? Microphone check. Mama, microphone check. Hoping everybody is doing well. Good morning. Get that all settled. See that? Or maybe a little. You don't want to be too loose either. You know? That's sloppy. People make a lot of judgments about a man's tie. You want to make sure you do it right. All right? And cut this off too, by the way. You're not going to... Don't show up to the interview with that. That's useless. That's some jungle stuff. All right. Let's get, get to the action. Absolutely. Oh, I thought I had it right up there for you on the future so you guys could see the good news. Now... I don't know if you guys are noticing. Where is that? Come on now. 
there it is there's that beautiful baby all right you can see we're a bit green today so we've we've oop that just updated all right, we've been green most of the morning. Let's reiterate that. We've been green most of the morning. We've got a slight red uh, pullback in all markets. Um, the biggest one being the Russell 2000 at 0.3% down on the day. Um, S&P VIX is also down, probably adjusting to this recent pullback. But nonetheless, we're flat, um, you know, or what you might call sideways. So I just wanted you guys to know that um, every time you see my thumbnail on YouTube, you're going to be able to get a little bit of a clue of what that particular market is leading into. All right. So if you see a thumbnail that's got red on red, uh, that means we've been down as, as of when the video began, uh, which of course can change. Um, if we're sideways, you're going to see red on green or green on red on any one of the thumbnails. And if we're bullish and green, um, um, in the pre-market or power hour going into pre-market or going into power hour then you're going to see all green in the thumbnail and that'll always be a code so even if you don't have a lot of time just to um you know to watch the live stream if you're on the road or anything like that then at least you'll know all right one thing i know stock dr sub green market thumbnail tells me everything i need to know thought that'd be fun i just want to let you guys know little secret there so um I've gone over a lot of news. A lot of people find um, the market action yesterday to have been a bit extreme and um, expecting a little bit of a cool off from the pullback um, after uh, quite a bear market rally. So as the narrative of we're going back down to all time lows and there's the uh, narrative that we're heading bullish, I'm a little bit in the middle camp where I think we're going to uh, be sideways here. I'll I think we have levels um, that we could go in either direction for SPY. Let me bring this up for myself here. All right. Um, by the way, Natty Gas was up really, really high this morning, and it looks like it's pulled back a little bit. So we have to see this because this is actually we're seeing a lot of volatility in the futures market for Natty Gas. Um, whereas the rest of the energy sector, not so much. Seeing a pullback on TLT. And so we're going to have to keep an eye on the yields and the rates. We're going to watch the 10-year treasury today. The D DXY dollar index. We're also going to get into a little bit of the European um, currency. There's some things going on with currency in general, which I know is a, not the funnest topic on the planet, but it has a lot to do with the economics. So... We will be getting into that as well. But you see here, um, we're, we're, you know, when we're discussing levels on the SPY, for example, I think we have a lot of support. All right, so you, you can see we, we ran up pretty quick. Yesterday, we gapped down and never filled that gap. Here, let's uh, go, I'll go to the one hour chart so you just look at yesterday and you know, if you didn't have a chance to see, you can see we, we had this gap down and we never filled it. Um, we just pulled back and pulled back, pulled back. What that tells me is there's some space to fill that gap or to rerun this range, right? So that range um, could be anywhere from 417 all the way up to 420. And I, I 421, maybe you could give it that um, in order to fill the gap that it did not fill yesterday. Um, I think this would be a little bit more likely than us seeing, you know, a direct, you know, downward swing off of the bull market rally that we just came from because there's not like we we're having economic news that's not terrible. It's not great, but it's not as bad as it has been. So uh, we don't have any particular catalysts. There's not a big earnings season yet. Yesterday, I, I misstated that NVIDIA's earnings were coming up. I was watch what happened was I was watching an older video and didn't realize the timestamp on it. And I, I heard it while I was outside and I didn't check it. So NVIDIA's earnings happened already and oops. All right. But um, so generally speaking, you know, earnings seasons is past us. We've got Dollar Tree and a few others um, later in the week, but not too much. And we've got the Jackson Hole conversation where um, all the bankers get together and have their little gala. Um, and I, I don't expect um, any new news um, in that particular uh, meeting at all. I think it's uh, really September when we've got 
um, the big strain on uh, bearish sentiment is going to be coming back into us here. What's this? Summit Therapeutics. This was a uh, uh, big runner yesterday. It's pulled back 9% in pre-market right here. We can see that. I just want to get the... So we have some fundamental market mechanics, currencies, bond market, yields, things that we need to keep an eye on, as well as energy prices and... Uh, really, what else would there be? You know, any you know, inflation seems to be something where um, it's going to be in and around that eight percent range uh, for at least uh, another two months or so. So um, there's not a, a lot of terrible things dragging down this market. I think it's much more of a free for all. I think yesterday we saw a lot of selling off after uh, the rally, and it felt very algorithmic. It felt very controlled. So. I think right now is kind of one of those days where it's like swing for the fences, but watch your step, you know, because we have levels on the downside. Um, but like what, like what I was saying here, let's get back, actually zoom back on out. Um, the four hour chart seems to give us a lot of the concept of these support lines. Yep. It's got a lot. See, we have support at 406, basically 407. We have support at 408.99, basically 409. We have 410.30 support and 412.91, but we're at 413.26 right now. So we're looking at um, probably the strongest area of resistance that we're going to have here around the 406 um, to the downside. But then also we have resistance to the upside, lots of space. So I'm I'm saying we have a range that we could swing today if we had any headline risk or, 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 or a big piece of news. We could go as much as four spy points up or down in either way, essentially. That's what it basically these levels basically break down to. And so another one where one of those days like uh, where you really want to wait for your setup. And I think that's just going to kind of always be that common theme of what we're doing is basically waiting for your pocket aces waiting for that right setup and making sure you understand the levels and where the the sentiment is right now right now we're consolidating in at the 413 plus uh change range and for the cues we're in the 314.48 range um the the levels that we'd be looking at is that same gap fill because you can see they're both very similar so we might be looking at a a gap fill up as high as 322.97 so just call it 323 and let's take a look we were able to get a lot of the support right out of the four hour chart so you can see here we almost double bottomed off this support line right here the 314 but then we broke on through it and we've kind of come back to this level so we are at a, a pretty good support line right now. The next one that's significant um, in the short term is 311.50, followed by 308.13, 302.77. And a lot of people are talking about whether we're headed back to all time lows, whether we're going to um, double tap on the like the 293.50 sort of range. On the cues, I don't think anytime soon. I, I I don't see that anytime soon. And if in fact we don't, then when you actually pull out to the daily chart, or actually let's this is better on the weekly uh, with, when we're looking at six shots at once. And um, you'd actually see that um, we can see from about halfway here, right? We've got this down range again. This is the weekly for the spy and the cues. Spy bottom left, cues in the bottom middle and we're in this range right here right and we touched kind of within that range in a little bit of you know what do you call that the bullhorn bear bearish blowhorn pattern i don't i don't really subscribe to those it, you know something like that and um basically if we don't continue making all-time lows then we're going to either range out or um, actually possibly start moving towards an uptrending overall market, you know, again, on the weekly. So this is kind of a lot, much larger picture of what we're talking about here. Um, but um, that would be very bullish news, essentially. So if, if we were to come in here 
and bounce off. Let's see. Let's get this. That's a like. So let's say if we were to come in and bounce somewhere in the 305 range for the cues, and somewhere. What is this range here? So I, I don't see that for the spy. For the spy, I see around 402. Or even just that that psychological level of 400. Um, you know, if we were to pull back in a significant way right now, and and bounced off some of that support and headed in the right direction, that that would be a significant move towards ranging into a um, you know a bearish trend or at least being in a, a sideways trend rather than the downward trend that we're significantly have been a part of for about six months now seven months now uh yeah eight months august Duh. i guess you can't really call the past month and a half part of that but it's still within that trend as you see on the weekly so yeah okay so let's go around the horn it's 650 that means there's 40 minutes until the market opens and we want to make sure we go ahead and check out the rest of the futures market see how it's doing has anything changed since we first pop, popped onto the live stream in terms of um overall indexes not really still ranging out right there only thing i'm seeing is the range yeah no that's it that's what i'm seeing um russian markets up german markets up korean markets China markets pretty flat. Well, nothing too crazy going on there. Nothing too crazy. All right. Um, let's pop right over to energy. Uh, like I said, Natty Gas hit an all-time high. I think it was a 16 or 17-year all-time high this morning. And that was significant. But I'm, I'm seeing it pulling back immediately from that level. So um, it doesn't seem like it's quite the time for that trade. Um like we were talking about yesterday i was saying that it, that's not really my range to be bullish on natty gas right now uh because i think it has space to pull back and what are we seeing we're seeing brent oil up 1.14 percent uh carbon emissions down 1.67 percent uh wti crude oil 1.3 percent six percent up and um gasoline 1.1 percent down heating oil 0.36 percent down and we have natty gas at 0.89 percent up this was almost at ten dollars it's at nine dollars and 76 right now it was almost at ten dollars earlier today and that was crazy. so i think that we can pull up a little bit of a chat on good old natty gas if they'll give us Give us that love and not too many pop-ups you'll be able to see this on the right hand side of your screen as it loads yep get that pop-up out of here that's right people i am your pop-up ninja i am here to dj the stock market for you so you do not have to deal with the pop-ups that's it do, do, do. all right are we on natty gas is the question on this chart no won't we'll switch on over there that's all right we can pull it up i mean we're pretty much looking at it when you get over to the charts on on boil so we can we can just watch it from there but that's a leveraged etf so it's hard to get futures pricing from that u.s natural gas price hit shale era high so it was 14 year highs thank you wall street journal right there with the data all right so um we're seeing a little bit of oil bump in price now if anyone is curious as the difference between brent oil and wti crude um also there it's the amount of sulfur in the oil is the chemical breakdown difference uh wti being light and sweet if eating oil is your idea of a good time sweet meaning not too much sulfur in it and brent oil is a little bit less the other difference the economic difference why they trade at different prices even though wti is a higher grade higher quality oil is because wti is uh, pulled out of texas which isn't really on the ocean uh, so there is a transport cost to get it to the ocean then to the boats right whereas brent oil is based out of uk and um, the uk um, oil is is right on the shore 
and um, that doesn't have that same premium of delivery and distribution that WTI has. And that's why there's a price difference. In case anyone cares. So basically, you can look at Brent Oil and that's enough information to understand essentially what the wash price is. And uh, microphone check. Yep, just double checking that stream. And so essentially, you know, you could basically say, Brent, you know, oil right now as a whole is at 97 a barrel. You know, it's 97.68 on the price. 97 a barrel. And, and you know, it all just ended, ended up being about that same cost. And that's why they trade differently. It's just that makeup in the distribution. Do, 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 do. Oh, God. This, they didn't just don't stop loading this page. All right, let's get over to futures in the metals, hard metals. And as we let that load, we can see we've seen some bullishness in cryptocurrency, which is not necessarily translating into bullishness for small cap tech like uh, it, like it normally does. Um, but yeah, we, we did see a little bit of a bullish trend. That's loading right there. The metals are loading on that. So that's great. We'll let those come up while we... Well, all right, we'll wait. There's a new high quality um, internet line coming in for me. And uh, these live streams are going to be improving every single week over and over again as we get more um, equipment in, uh, improve the connection. Uh, we're just, it's nothing but up from here, that's for sure. All right, now I haven't looked at this yet, so there might be some surprises for me. Aluminum being up 1.21%, copper up 6.6%, gold up 0.74%, and lead down 1.4%, nickel down 2%. That's an interesting one for me. 0.5% um, up on palladium, though it's bouncing here and there. Platinum down 0.92%, silver down 0.74%, tin down 1.33%, 1 and zinc down a percentage point as of right now on the futures market for metals. All right, so let's get an overall assessment of this. All right, so it's copper. Those are your utilities. We got aluminum and copper. Those are utility metals. But your other utility metals, like um, not necessarily as much silver, but it's it's included. But um, tin and zinc and palladium and platinum. All right. I, it, this is a wash in terms of wh where it matters to us in terms of the commodity cycle and where it matters in terms of asset um, assets flowing in and out of any commodities that we've seen so far. Uh, we're gonna, lastly going to check out softs and see what type of futures pressure we're getting in the food markets. Now, if anyone's in on the stream right now, let me know if there's some big latency issues. Because what I'm seeing from here is that, that there, there might be. And um, internet was really, really uh, slow this morning in general. So I'm not sure how successful this stream's going to be if it continues to lag. Just let me know how it is um, from your end. All right, now looking into softs, futures, prices. Uh, we're seeing that cocoa is down 0.46%, coffee up uh, again, I believe 0.27%, sugar down pretty flat though, lumber down significantly 3.81%. That helps some people out. It's funny that lumber's in the softs just because it's not a metal. Everything else is food though. So we're... We're seeing weakness in, in that in general and a pullback, which is good for inflation and that's good for the economy. So like I said, we're seeing moderate to OK uh, economic data rolling in. 
and it's it's not necessarily the most alarming uh, time. So we're still in that that crux phase where we're understanding whether or not the um, the Fed is going to get their soft landing or not. We know that they won't, but when is the question? Because we want to make money off of it. All right. So you see some strength in uh, Bitcoin right here and Ethereum. And the overall market cap for um, cryptocurrency as a whole being at $1.070 trillion right now. Watch and worry for that to break down below uh, a trillion. Uh, I think we'll have that pulled back, but at some point we're going to get our cryptocurrency market back from the institutional investors. And we're going to be able to uh, get bullish once we get through this true crypto winter. All right, headlines from Bloomberg read, U.S. futures waiver, treasury, and dollar steady markets wrap. Hedge funds pile into a record hawkish rate bet pre-Jackson Hole. So that's a hawkish rate bet. Hmm, I'm not seeing that in the um, estimates for what they think. Right now, they think they, they're talking about basically the percentage of possibility that it's 75 bips instead of 50 is going up where it was pulling back quite a bit here so moving on with the headlines bed bath and beyond set for rebound as meme stock sell-off abates and uh yeah i hate every time mainstream media talks about meme stocks that's just ridiculous that's their stocks we're here to make money people be professional all right next is shrinking output from europe to asia feeds global recession fear <laughs> NFL's Dak Prescott signs multi-year deal with Blockchain.com. Oh, he's going to regret that. Apple's new iPhone 14. We're on 14 already. All right, to show India closing tech gap with China. All right. So we got 29 minutes until market open, you beautiful people. How's everything going on the stream? Hoping everybody's enjoying this. And yeah, let's get back over to the charts. And I need to... Wet my whistle. I'll be right back. I'm going to get some water. had to moit my whistle I'm sorry but doing these live streams you can get a little patched yes that is one of the words that people from Boston destroy brutally the word patched you know what's worse than that word top no one knows what I'm saying when I'm saying top all right stream getting better by the day thanks for the pre-market rundown absolutely and thanks for letting me take a break to get a little water i appreciate it let me know if you got any tickers or anything like that that you want to check out I'm here for you netto member 425 all right rock on so let's get into the charts shall we uvxy right here let's do a reset on this we're off on our price balance there we go UVXY is pulled back in the pre-market, but look at that run-up from yesterday, huh? 9.71%. Still seeing more weakness, as you can see here, um, just in morning trading action here. We're going to actually zoom out here to three-minute chart so everyone can see. Um, we actually did go for a gap up where um, in early hours we established level at 4.14.85 on the SPY. And... For the cues 
That was 31570. And they've been pulling back ever since, uh, though we can see that they retested some some stop losses here and there in market trading. So this is actually quite a volatile pre-market and uh, we have 26 minutes left um, till the market opens now and we're seeing significant volume at least pre-market volume pulling in in all sections here now tlt is pulling back in pre-market down to 111.75 which is um 0.81 percent down after yesterday being down 0.34 percent so as the price comes down the yields go up right so we'll, let's go over and check out the inversion I'm going to keep you guys on the chart so you can watch that. I'm going to just bring up the two and tens and see how our our yields are inverting today. This is something that key metric and we want to make sure that we are watching it every single day, no matter what. Here we go. You can always go to the FRED database, Federal Reserve website uh to get a lot of these statistics but they the i find the two and ten year yield spread you know they update it once a day and um that's not enough for the data that we need okay so we are you know go go ahead and show you take a look here Okay, you can see that the lowest point that we got on our inversion was right in here where we were 0.48 bips down on the inversion of the yield. And we have come back pretty well since then. We are still inverted. It's it's funny how this chart reads it. Um, this is zero line right here. See right there. That's ours. That's how inverted we are. So remember, we tapped it early in April and we we whipped out of it really quickly. You can see the significance of this particular yield curve inversion this time, as opposed to the one earlier this year in April. Um, that was just a little tickle, you know, compared to what we've been doing here. So we have recovered from the low of that yield curve um, about 50 percent. Um, but we're not pulling out of it yet. Remember, the issue that we're worrying about is actually a lot of times that the re recessionary pressures start to come in when the uh, when it uninverts. So not necessarily the moment that it inverts, but when it starts to uninvert uh, the two to ten year um, Treasury yields, it it ends up being that that's when your real recessionary pressures kick in because what's happening right now is people are going to short-term bonds as a flight to safety from equity risk and, and bearish markets and as soon as that switches over that fail safe is gone and short term goes down long term goes back up where it's supposed to be and that's the curve all right checking over in the comments all right let me know if you got any tickets you want to check out we have 23 minutes the bell rings and we start to make some money okay still seeing that weakness on the spy and the cues all right let's take a look at early morning runners uh, while we have a little bit of time, see if there's anything, gap, you know, gapping up heavily that we might want to get involved in and see if anything is gapping down that we might want to get uninvolved in. All right. The first thing I'm seeing here is W.I.N.T. Wintree Therapeutics this is every single day at what seems to be a breakneck pace. We have pharmaceutical biopharma companies running and stocks running yesterday in aftermarket i don't know if anyone was here but we went over a, a hilarious video uh that a guy made about what it was like to do the the most scary trading as he called it this the scariest trading strategy in the world which is trying to pick say 10 10 biopharma stocks and and hitting on one out of those 10 penny stocks that might actually get approval on phase four or um, he focused in on an alcohol uh, reduction pill that made you, you take the pill, it makes you just not really dig 
drinking alcohol and he bet against it and it was one of his one successful trades but it was it was a hell of a story you got to check it out um i subscribed to that channel he was awesome but okay so w-i-n-t wintry therapeutics up um point fifty eight point seven percent in pre-market gravitas education holdings up 36.41 percent iri pharmaceuticals 34.98 percent up um helios medtech um if any of these like you know biotechs if you want me to get into a little bit more specific ta with nam i will do that but they don't really catch my fancy that you know what i mean now, what is the market cap on QTNT Quotient? Uh, that one seems to ring a bell, and it is currently up almost 30 basis points on that. But a lot of times when we look at these runners, we want to see if it's a large market cap or we're just dealing with a super penny stock. The largest runner we're seeing here is Wet G, this We Trade Group, which has been swinging like crazy. Now it's up 16.86%. All right, let's bring up the chart on WeTrade because it's over a billion in market cap. And I don't like to get us bogged down in penny stocks that we don't know about. If I'm gonna trade penny stocks, I'm gonna watch them on a watch list for like two months, something like that. Just off to the side every single day, keeping an eye on them. And we've, we've got wet G top top right here. And and, and by watching them, just, just getting an idea of how algos trade them how high frequency trades them so you can see i've moved out to the four hour chat it was not too long ago it was just august 5th yeah and we had a the, it was basically the fourth leading into the fifth huge pre-market run-up you can see that pre-market run-up right there it got as high as this is wet g we trade group 58 dollars and 27 cents it's now at at six dollars and three cents in pre-market up 14.2 so zooming in a little bit closer so you can get a little bit more of an idea of more recent price action on this baby obviously it's pulled down obviously very significantly it it was only let's count that five trading days ago that it was more than twice its own value so we just see this stair step down stair step down stair step down and then shorts covering so we're seeing shorts covering in the pre-market right now um, I would love to know the dock pool action on this particular tr um, trade, wet G, because I'm sure it's significant. Well, I believe we went over the other day um, the um, profile summary for this company, but in case you didn't hear it, WeTrade Group is a company mainly engaged in providing an e-commerce, social networking, or micro-business platform in China. The company provides information on hotels, flights, traveling packages, and other traveling products. The company also provides online booking services and traveling packages to customers. They're, so they're B2B and B2C. The company conducts its businesses within the China market. Thank you for the translation. All right. Any particular news coming out? We've got something from four minute, 41 minutes ago in Benzinga. They're just talking about pre-market runners. Uh, let's see. We trade enters into strategic partnership with Guy Guide Limited to design and provide monkey po monkeypox testing. Strategic partnership, but they offer e-commerce solutions. Hotels, flights, pack, social networking, micro-business platforms. Maybe it's the micro-business platform. I'll tell you what, I'll look into it because that seems really out from left field um, for this profile, right? Hmm, okay. We trade enters into strategic partnership with Guy Guide to design and provide monkeypox testing kits and insurance coverage products ducks for traveling packages to the u.s canada australia european countries now it all makes sense we trade enters into strategic partnership they're just going to repeat themselves these articles are not well written that's it but they just stick to the headline basically the headline is just repeated over and over again so that's all that's all that is but um that seems to be palo alto networks i'm looking into other um, headlines from the day running on wet G experts cast doubt on dependence of monkeypox vaccine amid limited trial data. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see too much bullish sentiment coming from the monkeypox vaccines, but we need to keep an eye 
uh, because it was a significant play in 2020 to get in on Moderna. Like I think, what was what was Moderna back then? I think it was 20 bucks. Probably have to go out to the weekly chat right now for everybody to see. And that's 2021. So we did know that they were going to do mRNA vaccines and that that was going to get heavy subsidies from the government when it was $17.14, right? Ran all the way up to $492.08. So if monkeypox were to do something like that, you'd want to be in on that trade or you'd want to be available for the short because uh, it's come back significantly currently in pre-market sitting at 142.02 which is 0.32% down on the day all right so we will be keeping an eye on that sector to see if there's any bullishness coming out of the you know some upcoming lie about it right? I'm not getting into it I'm not getting into it. it's too political and yes, of course, economics do have something to do with politics, but that doesn't mean they also have something to have, have to have something to do with your bias. Okay, so we did see Natty Gas pull back. Now we're seeing it fill that gap and getting up into that. When I see one boil at 120, it's alarming. It's alarming. So I'm going to actually bounce us on over to our futures market again here, which I like to look at through investing.com. That's that yield curve. Here's our link. I'm using the Brave browser because they give me cryptocurrency for browsing. Anybody else do that? And no, it's not a lot. But I'm going to be browsing anyway. And it, it actually runs pretty efficiently. Uh, it uses a little bit more bandwidth. That's the only thing I might I might shift away from using it because of that. Uh, but it doesn't. It's not very resource intensive. Um, it runs a little bit more like Opera that way than it would like Firefox or Chrome. Um, uh, so it's not a bad browser. I'm pretty surprised. All right, just letting that load. All right, TT. Good morning, TT. How you doing, Doctor? Question regarding yesterday's halts. Was it true that it was illegal to halt on the New York Stock Exchange on the first day of issuance of APE or any new ticker or dividend? No. No, that's not illegal. That's within their right. And they can do that. And there's no law governing it. It's, uh, you know, the entity that governs it would also be the one that would regulate or police it. So, no. Thanks for the question. About the same i mean even with foreign markets and ourselves i mean it's really really within line other than the fact that we started the day green and just so you guys know I, i'm i've got a little kind of code in my thumbnails for everybody every single day so whether it's power hour or now like pre-market if you see my thumbnail and it's red on red that means we're red on red for the day if you see a green on red or red on green that means we are about sideways, about flat. If you see that thumbnail and it's green on green, whether it's pre-market or power hour, that means we're going into that video bullish in that sense. So you always have that little code, even if you're on the road, don't have time to punch into the live stream. You see that little thumbnail? You always kind of know where it was at once the video started. Just to, just to let you know, I guess I think I'm pretty cool for that idea. And if you go back to the, if any of you are ever going in for a job interview and you need to know that perfect tie knot, we started off the live stream tying a half Windsor right here. And I do think that was one of my tricks to getting good jobs in finance was just having that certain bit of class that they like to see, shine your shoes, tie your tie right, and, and stay, stay an upright citizen. You know, be, be, uh, don't be a liar, don't be a cheat and 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 do your best that's um that's how that's how they teach you to be a good fiduciary advisor all right thanks tt say tt said got it is there a place i can start to learn how to play and 
get better at the market would love to be comfortable trading options in the future do you have discord platform and i can learn from you i do have a discord platform it's a community platform it's free and i i, I can put in uh links in the descriptions come in it's just a, it's a community for us to talk and to work together and to learn and to and share ideas and stuff like that it's not paid for it doesn't have like paywalls or anything like that and it's never going to and um absolutely the other thing that you can do which i'm looking forward to doing with you is um check this out let's go over to the charts and if you have weeble i found it to be an extremely most brokerages are off of this but i found weeble to be an extremely convenient way to do paper trading you see over here on the left hand column you can i actually have pretty much the same setup within my paper trading layout and other than i drop off my watch list so i can kind of just focus in and you'll see here this is this is my paper trading account on weeble and everybody should be doing this every single day period period that's everyone should be um paper trading every single day because it's just like playing the guitar singing a song um anything that you 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 want to keep up practicing it you want to be doing it all the time even if you don't want to be risking money paper trade you want, you're not sure you're a good trader, you're gonna find out real quick over here in the paper trading market whether you're any good or not. Uh, and the greatest thing about it is you don't have to have that risk. So what I would like us to do is to get into week-long competitions with each other, trading for the week, whoever does the best return, worst return. It's gonna be, you, uh, first off, you can't do this with a winner. That's illegal. Like, so, like, this is for bragging rights, maybe, um, what I would like to maybe turn it into is a format where you either bring in um, and any of the brave souls that are willing to talk about what they did that week in order to win the competition or what they did in order to lose that competition. It's going to be lighthearted. It's, we're not here to, like, you know, uh, make people think that the only thing you're supposed to be able to do is make money on trades or else you suck at stocks. No, you have to learn. There's only... Like, you have to get good at it. You have to understand price action. You have to get used to levels. And you have to learn what your psychology is in the market as you trade. This You need these things. And you don't need to lose money in order to get good at it. I mean, it takes a while to play the guitar. It takes a while to learn how to sing well. It takes a while to dance a jig, you know? And, and so everything, you know, needs practice. So we should practice here paper trading. I'm working on a platform but essentially trying to find the right platform for us to have competitions on weekly competitions everyone comes in sign up anonymous you know logged in we'll, whether or not we actually show each other what trades we're doing or we we just kind of show the bottom line and then break them down later there's going to be so much information valuable information we can get from each other more than just having this one dude sitting here just trying to break down ta for you every single day i want to i want us to get community development so that's what we will be doing right hey 11k how you doing that channel sounds cool i haven't tried paper trading yet oh we can do that i know i know 11k's got fidelity as a brokerage house so if you just popped in i was mentioning that weeble's pretty good for paper trading um i fidelity has some other cool things we have to check out they have a portfolio rebalancing partnership that they just they're collaborating with another service that is oh oh we have got to go up that's an over aftermarket thing though we've got seven minutes until the market opens so we got to stay focused on price price action right now but if i forget let me remind me to uh bring that up because that is a super cool oh my god i can't even believe you can tell you can actually verbally speak your command for a screener and it will take your text and you can screen for stocks based on any of your criteria and it'll, it'll send you um, alerts through an app located on you. It's mind blowing. And it'll rebalance portfolios based on this. It's a, it's, we have to do a deep dive on it because I haven't even touched it yet. I'm waiting to like learn how to use it with everybody. We'll learn together. All right, we're seeing some strength in the market coming into the market opening. Ding, 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 ding. Open bell is coming in in six minutes now. And we're seeing some strength back to the upside. This is um, strengthening the thesis that we're going to be kind of sideways within a range today, swinging back and forth. That means scalping. That means swinging. 
but it also means waiting for your appropriate levels, right? The level that we've established here on the day for the spy here, 41248. I'm gonna bounce back over to this other layout. I think it's a little bit crisper and cleaner for y'all, but I will be um, doing some paper trading today as well. Let's move back up to our typical layout right now. Um, we've always liked to have spy top left. We got QQQ in the middle here. That's the NASDAQ. It's been a little while since we've watched the Dow, but somebody was asking about the Dow yesterday, so we're going to bring that on up. All right, Dow being down um, to uh, 300. Well, this is the DIA, so it's the ETF for it. It's, it's 330.38. Uh, um, just 10 10. 0.10% down, just 1%, 0.1% down on a day, not too much. And what do we want to look at here? All right, we haven't gone over Amy and Ape yet. We'll just check those. We saw that, I saw that um, Ape was up 11.33 in pre-market. AMC is up 3.63% in pre-market, up to $10.84 a piece. All right, SPY is still flat right there in that range look at that all right so let's get over let's pop over to gme see how she's doing 35 10 in pre-market up 1.74 percent let's check out how bed bath and beyond is doing up 0.54 percent so swinging swinging still doesn't look like she's a dead cat yet after being down 16.23 percent yesterday not too surprised to see a bounce up if in fact she ain't a dead cat looking like we're hitting a resistance level pre-market on spy that's a little bit interesting to me here this 413 14 now, we haven't really established that level in any of our previous analysis there's a weird amount of volume that came in on that last three candles here. We're on the minute chart. I'm going to zoom in on the 15 seconds, see if I can get a little bit more of a volume profile. Just the Weeble uh, doesn't do volume profiles, just kind of breaking down the volume candles is all that is. Mm. Mm -hmm. This is a trade at your own risk kind of day. All right, I am going to Let's, let's uh, pop on over to Fidelity right now and bring up some options, chain statistics and analytics for the SPY right now. It was bearish yesterday. Um, the overall sentiment, more puts uh, than calls is what I mean by that. And it's still the same. It's actually a 1.43 call to put ratio in favor of the puts and the first thing that i think as i read through that am i on the can you guys see this with me all right beautiful hmm. open interest 90 day average volume is definitely Okay, so sentiment is extremely bearish. This is an extremely bearish sentiment in an options chain. And yesterday that paid off big. And it would surprise me a little bit to see that same payoff happen today. Yeah, I am a little skeptical of this market today. I really am. This is... It's got the, the, the signs of a bull and a bear trap at the same time. And right in. So, see, we talked off that level that I was talking about. This is, let's just call it 413.20. Um, that is an interesting level to establish because of some um, previous week's data that we have been going over last week in the live stream, which my live streams were terrible last week. Thanks for anybody who's sticking it through, still subscribe to me now. They're getting better, hopefully, as I improve little by little. And, um, you know, I, I can feel the improvement just from being in front of the camera. You can't practice this off camera. This is, you know, the live unscripted, just sit here and rap about prices. It's pretty fun. I was chatting with my mom. I was like, mom, basically just saying number, 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 number percent, like as many times as I possibly can to get all the information out. 
And um, it really does kind of settle your mind a little bit um, when you get in front and get a rhythm, get a groove. Plus, I'm doing all my own production audio, uh, connecting all the dots on the stocks and trying to bring you the actual um, data right to your face. Well, we're also got live news ticker now. That's fantastic. I'm looking at the China stocks right now to see any kind of differences. I'm kind of doing a round robin on my own here. If I will report to you if I see anything that really stands out, I don't see the point in reading off every price of every once. So this list that I'm looking at here is in commodities. And we're seeing that oil up. Dig is a, um, a leveraged um, oil gas play. Um, surprisingly, Boyle is usually leading this list if Natty Gas is bullish on the day. I'm assuming we're seeing a little bit of a pullback there. I, you know, I mentioned that Boyle at 120 is a level. Let's bring this up really quick here. Well, it seems to be rejecting off that level. That's palladium. Okay. So we did see it get to 121, 122 range in pre-market here. So we've got space, room to go. And the markets are open. Beautiful humans, let's get to it. All right, bring us over to the Weeble charts. Get that up in front of me and we're going to zoom on into the one second chart. I like to do this for at least the first five minutes of the day so we can get any real data and um, see how volume is affecting our levels. All right. So let's give us a little bit more space here. Okay, you see that price action gets crazy on the one second chart don't let it turn you nuts all right remember patience we're establishing levels i have some friends that yoloed on super bullish day today i i hope they i hope it goes well um what they did was they picked up a bunch of options um in the bet that they would that we'd gap up essentially filling the gap uh that we didn't fill yesterday and it's it's a gambling type of bet it's not it's not necessarily that sound of um a strategy at its, at all but it is a strategy you know it could you know their their thesis on it was uh, the market never goes down three days in a row and they could prove us right right now i mean right now we are opening the market down but it could reverse course at any time essentially it's flat that's why you see the thumbnail for today was green on red All right, some of the major runners coming up here on my watch lists. We covered some of the other ones, but Marin Software is pretty significant as a small cap tech upcoming. That's M-R-I-N. And I think I'm going to bring that up on this chart right here, bottom right. We're seeing a push up on SPY going up to that 413.42 level. Pretty soon we're going to zoom out. We're almost three minutes into the trading day so far and we're getting nice ranges and establishing an idea of what this market wants to do for us today. MRIN, Marin Software, up 28.49%. Uh, now I want to remember, is this, is this a mining stock? Digital marketing, digital marketing. Um, for search, social, and e-commerce channels. It offers a unified software as a surface as advertising management platform for advertisers and agencies. Its platform offers analytics, workflow, optimization solutions for marketing professionals, allowing users to manage their digital advertising spend. Did this have earnings? Seeing some stuff announces Snapchat integration. Ah, okay. Stepped up 43% on a Snapchat aftermarket. Let's check the chart on this. We're on one second now. We're going to zoom on out to the one hour chart. Looking at MRIN, which is on the bottom right. And we will get back. Oh, look at that spike up. Look at that. Wow. That's close. That ran from 174 up to 295 wow all right keep that on your list 
that on your list. It's a penny stock, but keep an eye on it after the Snapchat integration. That's pretty good. All right, now let's get back into the action. We're going to go to the five second chart. One second will make you crazy. Bringing this data over here, lining everything up. Ape shares up 19.34% to $7.17 as of right now. AMC, $10.76 per share, up about 3% on the day. Dow Jones looks to be about flat. NASDAQ with the Q's up into the green territory. Look at that. So one of the things about making a bet um, in pre-market or in, in, you know, power hour the day before is if that you don't gap at all, then there was not really much of a reason for you to make that bet the day before. You pretty much just had a bunch of theta decay during a time where you couldn't even trade the option. And if you just got up in the morning, bought it at flat, whatever you did, if you were bullish or bearish, either way, you'd do better off. That's one of the reasons I don't like that particular gamble because it's, it's, it, you know, <laughs> you just get your butt hit if nothing happens. I don't, I don't like that. All right, SPY ranging out right now in the 41350s, you know, with a little bit of uh, standard deviation, about 20, 20 bips in variation. And there we go, broke right through that level. All right, seeing strength there in the SPY, up 0.1%. Um, is this tradable is the question. All right, so we've seen ranges just on the day from 412.79 up to the 413.78. It's one point. Yeah, it's tradable. I'm going to be patient here. All right, I feel in my gut, my first gut is telling me we're going um, uh, bullish direction on the overall market it feels like an opportunity to do that and but I, I there's a part of me that's hesitating and realizing that psychologically i'm over reacting to the news right so what what i you know this is that pocket aces that i like to say you know that i that i'll wait for i don't mind missing a setup as long as i i would rather know my setup and know that it's a setup than just gamble on the kind of the heartbeat of yeah it feels it feels like the market's going up like that's great that's all well and good but there are algorithms that are literally there to sweep you out of your feeling every time you have it so if you you know if you miss if you see a level that kind of calls to you like oh wow i think i'm missing out it's getting bullish or it's heading bearish i gotta short it immediately stop yourself and just remember you got an entire day of trading you don't need to trade that. Oh, TT, I just saw your message there. I'm a little bit late. It's about before market opened. But just so you know, um, in the future, uh, videos or live stream I'll have that discord link in there and you're all welcome to join on discord I'm not in there very often but if you guys were in there chatting and rapping I'd be in there all the time there's voice uh, channels there's uh, places for us to gather data um, kind of everything that you would want in a discord again it's free it's for the community at some point I'm gonna need um, some people to help me moderate it make sure everything stays clean and on the professional side remember we're here to make money and and not shit on people and um i'll need some help at some point but i think it's pretty pretty much under control right now but nonetheless in future videos you'll have that link everybody's welcome great place for us to talk um i really like the two-way conversation more than me just you know rapping at the mic all day um it's actually what i prefer is to just sit around and talk about this with a bunch of people so I imagine that one day we can get a stream where a bunch of us sit around and, and talk together about everything that we're doing. That's what I'd like to get into. Uh, but we will, we will see. Okay. All right. Now, now take a look there. So we hit that 413, just under the 414. We might have actually tapped 414 psychologically. You know, just gave it. No, not even. 
but on the, on the spy we're speaking of here, and then it pulled back, right? And this is kind of what I mean, like that's, that's, what did I just save myself right there by not acting on a trade that was coming from my gut or my hop? Where, oh, 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 it feels bullish. I know a lot of friends that are bullish. Oh, this news was really bullish. Oh, look at these candles. Wow, they feel really bullish. Wait. As late as in the master, wait. You don't need to make that trade. Remember, you don't need to make that trade. You're not going to miss anything by waiting for your next setup. If anything, you're just going to get more data for your next setup. And that's what patience really is. It's not patience it's strategy it's waiting till you know you actually have enough data to just sit back and say oh yep that's a buy oh yep that's a fade and then watch your ding dong candles and your boom boom candles come rolling in however it goes that's what you want to be at and, and that's just how to be centered with your own psychology that's the best you can do and sometimes always remember that some of the best trades you'll ever make are the ones you don't make You're not losing anything. You just go wait for another setup. There's thousands and thousands of stocks and even more options to trade every given day. Plenty of ways to make money. Don't rush into it. Wait for your setup. Not going to miss anything. Any tickers, any tickers, any tickers around. Gold looking interesting. I thought it was pretty flat. Let's take a look over here. I'm going to look at gold. I might look at a leverage ETF like JNUG. Drop an MRIN off the list here. Ooh, yeah, uh, JNUG's got some action up 4.59% on the day so far. And yeah, look at those candles. That seems nice. This is the 15 second chart. So I'm going to zoom on out to the three minutes. See what we have for. Oh, yeah, I see what you're talking about. I see what you're talking about now. Look at that action. Ooh, hot on the commodities. All right, you guys keep an eye on. Wait, 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 wait. Let me get back to the 15 seconds so you guys can see this really, really well. Get some data. I'm going to do a little research on that gold price right now. Flashing over to some of my other off-screen uh, details right here. Keep those questions coming in anytime. Make sure you like the stream so we can get it out to more people. And, and like I said, yeah, just kick back, relax, and enjoy. We're just here to trade this market. Anytime you got a question, whatever it is, you just let me know. That's what I'm here to do. Seeing that he gas pull back a little bit here as gold gets strong. All right, I want to get over to the futures market. And I'm going to do it. Do it without going to investing.com because I... I am officially so sick of their, their goddamn pop-ups. God damn it. Then we'll go over to Fidelity. All right. Hmm. Spot price on gold right now is 1,752.30. Wow, doesn't that feel low? Doesn't that really feel low? And let's see if this connects. I'm wondering if I can get this on a chat. I don't, Fidelity doesn't let you chat the spots, but why is JNUG up so much off a of point? two three percent move up on gold while silver's down 0.41 percent right now platinum's down 0.63 um we're seeing corn at 3.58 percent up that's alarming wow we're seeing some run-ups once the 
opening bell ding happened okay uh wheat being up 1.52 soybeans be, being up 1.32 percent so far on the day in the futures market two-year treasury is relatively flat but onto the green in terms of a price that means that's a yield coming down I don't expect that to stay like that for too long and 10 year yields heading up right, let's get back over to Weeble I'm not really understanding this JNUG move. Um, it, I mean, I understand that it's a 3x leveraged gold play, right? But still, not not getting this uh, equivalency here of, of where we're at. Like um, opening candle of $30.77, and we're at um, $32.31 right now, and we're seeing super bullish. That was a great call out, by the way, on um, on the on the gold just to take a look at it right here what's up ryan i'm feeling like dg is due for a pullback let's take a look i can't think of what dg is off the top of my head is that uh futures sounds like a future can't think of it off the top of my head too many acronyms check it out here Oh, okay, okay, Dollar General. Got you, got you. Let's see here. Wow. All right, so we've just pulled out to the one-year daily on Dollar General. We're on Fidelity. Are you guys with me on that? Yep, rock on. All right, is my fat head in the way? Yep. All right, I'll put myself over there for now. All right. Okay. This is one of the first times I've looked at this particular chat on the daily for one year. I'm just trying to understand some of these gaps and the levels for them and really where we are at. So it, we're, we're at a critical breakdown level, really. Hmm. What's the earnings layout for that? Taking a look here, see if there's anything in the news you might know better than me. Microphone check. Retail earnings on deck as Q2 reporting season enters its final leg. The second quarter reporting season is winding down at the end of the week. Retail earnings released in this past week mostly came in better than feared. Here are the key earnings schedule. Got it. All right. Let's zoom on in now. One month chat. Still the daily. And break this out into one hour. See how much data we can get from that. That brings us all the way back to the 26th. Okay, wow. There's a lot of swings on this stock. Anywhere from 237 all the way up to 259. What's the options chain like on this? Let's 
It's a bit of action on that option, shame. Hmm. Bit of action, not too, too much. It's not super liquid. All right. Now, let's get into the five-day chart. Still kind of formulating my opinion on this one right now. How are the markets doing while I'm looking at this, by the way? Oh, we just had a big swing. Oof. All right. Let's do this on... on um, let's do this on Weeple. Look at that swing. Oof. That's a profit. That's a profit range right there. All right. Hold on. Let me get this sorted. There we go. Pulling off gold for now. We're still seeing gold run. It's now the JNUG um, ETF, which is Leverage Gold Miners ETF, is up 6.38. Wow. Good eye on gold right there. Actually, we're going to bring, we can pull off AMC for now, keep Ape up in the middle, and get DG over here. Happy to see Ape up over at $7 IPO. That's nice. All right, big boom boom candles on the market right now. Look at this bullishness. Look at that. Okay, we'll get back to review on, on DG, but you are absolutely correct on its pullback. And it's trading with the market right now, so let it. Uh, let me know what your time frame is on it and what your play is, what you're thinking about doing with that play. We'll get a little bit more into it. We got to check out these swings right now. Okay, there's our level. Right around 414.44. All right. This is, this, is a, this is a swing day. This is a the algorithmic liquidity sweeping, profile sweeping. Hey, if you want to buy a call, wrong. You want to buy a put, wrong. That's what kind of day it is. A sideways day, a scalp day, a swing trade day. So what you want to do is outposition yourself um, from the algorithms and... Um, understand that the levels you establish might have a uh, standard variance that would be exactly what those algos would calculate in order to sweep people make them sell right so you want to be more sophisticated than that you want to wait for your move but we have an opportunity right now this is a betting opportunity either to see the mark market break to a bullish pattern for the day or at least the morning um or to see it swing on back down my gut's telling me this is coming back down um, in general, I don't see this th this pattern that we have right now doesn't tell me that we're on a bullish a bullish run by any means. It says that we have a level of retracement here where it could come back to like 413.50 from the 414.46. And so we'll have to see how it plays out knowing that we are 22 minutes into the trading day so far. And I hope you beautiful people are having a good time with me. Let's go over and check over the comments, see if there's any questions I have missed. No, there isn't, but you make sure you let me know. Uh, let me know what you're trading. And uh, if you need any tidbits or ideas, if you're stuck on anything, if you want to know how this brokerage account works, how this particular legal statue in finance, what market mechanics of economics are with this thing or that thing, just ask me. Let me know. I'll let you know. Pulling back on DG as it continues to work with the, it's really not with the markets. So that's certainly not the accurate way to say it. I, I, I think, um, I think Dollar General is a little bit out of my wheelhouse for right now. And the reason why I'll tell you, um, it's a weird one for me is because I'm, you know, the way you see recessionary activities happen, you'll see like Nord streams and like the luxury um retailers 
pull back first as people stop buying the richy rich items and then they they go back down to the the lower ticket pricing places like the um dollar general uh that we have right here right and so they actually can do well um in recessionary environments because they end up getting a larger amount of clients going into the to buy from them so rather than thinking about it like it's some sort of index about how the plebes and the us plebes and poors are doing um i actually think about it as it has a better chance to be bullish uh during times like this so um it's a weird one for me because it's bullish in a recession and that would mean to uh you know most likely provide uh, additional strength through a bear market as well let me zoom back out on this I'm, I'm getting stuck on this thought right here on this dollar general it's it's plaguing me all right so what's the date so they had this big gap down that's got to be earnings that's a weird date for earnings what was that gap down then i gotta check that out The date of this 527. Where were we on the spy on 527? So it tanked down. Oh. Let's bring up. Hmm. That's a weird one. So, you know, I like the stock. I like the setup. Um and I think it's it's an interesting discussion. I don't know if I really have the bearing on on um, on this really correctly. I mean, we've seen that earnings gap right there. They see that's a dividend paying stock right there. That's good. It's long term strong. It's consolidating in here. Tapping off its 50 day. It's right in a range right now. So essentially, okay, so here's what I would say. Um, right now, the range established for Dollar General over the past month or so, um, maybe two, is uh, right here in that 242.93 and the 258.36. So where are we? Right in the middle, right? So I would wait for the setup. Uh, and the setup that I'd be waiting for is that to see this either um, stay within its range where you see this pull back into the 243.36 right now, bounce off that support, head up. That will give you a bearish moment. Now, if you start seeing over the next day or two, it starts breaking to the upside. It has room to go all the way, you know, till it hits resistance at like the 256.65 kind of range and um it's kind of i don't want to say that's a double or triple top i really don't see it like that i see more of an upward trend here um before that range this range that we're trying to establish right here so what i would say is is wait for your setup within that range area and if it breaks that range whether it's a breakdown or a break up i would be surprised if to break up to be honest so i'd be leaning a little bit more bearish on this um in the sense so what i would be looking for and what i'd like dollar general to do would go up to 256.65 and then i could fade it uh if it goes the other way 243 244 kind of range if it doesn't get that far i wouldn't say it's the setup i'd be looking for all right let's get in on the market and zoom on in any more questions coming in you just let me know my internet is messing up over here, brother. I'll try to get back on in a bit, but I'm going to unplug the router. All right, rock on, Ryan. Where's that? I'll put my fat head back over here. Either, either Or I'll just forget. Does that make sense or does it just... See, I like the watch lists. So maybe it makes sense for me to be over here because the chat's probably a little bit more effective for everybody and I'll read this. Maybe right in the middle. Right in the middle is where I'm in the least. Okay, we'll do that for now. I'm, it looked like I'm in like the least way right there from the from the chat perspective. 
to the watch list perspective, we can see the green. Ooh, look, and I can, I can finger those greens. Nice. <laughs> All right, beautiful humans, let's go around the horn on news right now. All right, I'm actually going to try a new format for checking the news uh, because I don't really like just sticking with mainstream narrative as the only um, thing. So I'm going to try out Fidelity's news right now and see how easy it is for us to use, right? You can get ticker by ticker news, as you know. Uh, you can get watch list news, and that's what I like to do. I like to get all my watch list news in one place right here. And that's all my watch lists across the whole market. The only problem is one of those is the banking sector. And you can just get cranked up with filings, Morgan Stanley filings in your news feed from that. So actually, let's back off that concept and let's get into, look for news in the long terms. see fidelity is a little wonky you know like in terms of an interface it's a little wonky um oh we got some good data here though at least all right first thing here meta reaches 3.75 million settlement of facebook location tracking lawsuit <laughs> disney party in the metaverse miley cyrus trademarks come in like a wrecking ball <laughs> Um, Twitter, lawmakers investigate Twitter security chief's whistleblower allegations. Hmm. I want to know a little bit about, more about that. We'll check that in after hours. I'm going to bounce on over to the markets while we're reading news. We still need... Okay, we're within that range on SPY 414. Uh, about flat on the Qs is about 315.50 right there. We did have a bit of a pullback uh, from that top. Uh, but we are looking to test all-time highs again. So, okay, again, going through any kind of significant news. Square Afterpay drops designer NFT keys to the New York Fashion Week. Mm -hmm. Amazon says Twitch will now let partners stream on YouTube and Facebook. Oh, really? That's pretty awesome for me. Actually, I could go over to Twitch and then it'll stream out to YouTube and Facebook from the Twitch stream. That would be dope because I don't have enough bandwidth to do that by myself. I don't know. Does anybody like Twitch? I know it's a gaming platform, so it might not be the place for finance, but you never know. Still, if it has that feature where I could... You know, just get it out to YouTube. The only thing is I'd rather just be connected on YouTube, have the chat in front of me, and, and be rapping with everybody. I don't want to make everybody go to Twitch. Ford to suspend transit connect van sales in U.S. by the end of 2023. Doesn't mean much to me. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's company bets on Oxy strategy to capitalize on high oil prices. Houston Chronicle, 9.07 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, they've been talking about this. I mean, they talked about it a lot yesterday. It's a big part of the narrative. It's, I'm wondering if there's any more detail here, but I'm not seeing. I think it's just a, a replay of the conversation yesterday. Apple, here's how much you'd have right now if you invested 1,000 in Apple shares when Steve Jobs stepped down as CEO in 2001. And a pointless article. Intel. Intel Corp says deal if deal close not occurred on or before February 22nd, 223. And Co or Brookfield terminate deal. Co to get termination fee of 250 million. Sounds like some drama, Intel. Which deal? Oh, it's a it's so a Brookfield and Co. Okay. Intel sounds like a bunch of jerks. Intel uh, Brookfield Asset Management 
affiliate signed deal to invest up to 30 billion in Arizona chip factories. I wonder if this is part of the stimulus that semiconductor industry has been getting. Can you guys see this right here? Let's see. Just double check the stream. No, you can't. That's weird. That's weird. You can't see that news. You can see. All right. Well, trust me, this is, this news sucks to read anyway, so I'll, I'll read it to you. So Intel said Tuesday it signed a definitive agreement with the infrastructure affiliate Brookfield Asset Management to invest up to 30 billion and expand manufacturing at the company's Ocotillo campus in Chandler, Arizona. Uh, the deal is part of Intel's a semiconductor co-investment program, which aims to provide ways to fund growth in the semiconductor industry and also follows the company's memorandum of, of understanding announced a memorandum of understanding announced on February 2022. In under the terms, Intel will fund 51% of the project cost and the remaining 49 will be funded by Brookfield. Hmm. Uh, what is, you know, I, there must be some profit there for Brookfield. So we'll retain majority ownership and operating control of the two Chandler chip factories in Chandler, Arizona. The transaction is expected to be completed by the end of the year, subject to uh, customary closing conditions. Intel shares gained 0.8% in recent pre-market. Well, that's interesting. That's interesting. We're starting to see the trickle-out effects of... Um, bringing semiconductor manufacturing back into the States. What do you guys think about that? I know. Oh, thanks for that feedback on, on uh, Twitch, uh, Neto member 425. And yeah, I, it, it seems a little bit too niche of uh, an environment uh, to begin right here when you've got the, the, the most eyes and a lot of demand here on YouTube. But might as well keep struggling to strive over here. But I do like that feature. I wish YouTube would, would let me do that. Still nothing big on the news front, so let's bounce on back over to the chats. All right, we're on the one-minute chat now. I'm going to zoom us all in onto the 15-second chat so we can get a little more data here. Um, we did break down. Off that bullish run, like, look at that psychology right there. So we were there early together, right? When it was like five, six minutes into the trading day. And I told you I wanted to pull back from a, a, a bullish sentiment, which was correct. In the, on the, on the timing aspect, went straight down. But then we fired up. I would have been fine in the long run. There's a learning lesson to that. And... But I also think that it's important uh, not to get stuck in a trade because you're like, ah, well, okay, I bought it at a high. Now it's going down to a low, but it surely it'll swing back up and break to a new all-time high, right? You know, look at it. Right? We have a swing trading. Stock doctor said we're going to be swinging all day. Like, yes, that's true. And yes, it will work out. Um... If you're in the options, you also have timing involved with your trades, right? So um, what this peak would have been if it had gone right up from the buy-in isn't the same as after it goes down and goes up for another 30 minutes, us being 38 minutes into trading hours for the day so far. And we have heavy ass price action right now. I mean, we've got first first minutes of the day, not much swing potential here, but then just that, that gut moment pull down, great swing another great swing these are not great swings uh, but once we hit here we see another um, good pattern because this is kind of bouncing off our VWAP and our 200 candle moving average right now and then heading into a bullish territory even more being up 0.3 percent on the day right there right so um, what I would say you should think about you know it's all up to you and how you want to trade it you can hold those and wait I like to be in and out, and I like to um, exit a trade when the setup breaks down and it doesn't break down in my favor. 
Um, look at the swings we got on Ape right there. Dollar General pulling back up, showing some strength over there. 248.31 right now. Jay, Jay Nug just can't be held down. Pulled back to 32.74 as a line of support. Now it's double topping on 32.20, uh, more or less. Just broke that uh, level right in front of us, right in our face. God damn, gold is off on a run. That's interesting. That's interesting. I think it's mostly a recovery right now. We'll see. Could even be shorts covering in the paper market. Spy's got a nice push to the upside. Uh, establishing a range most recently here of 413.42 up to 414.80. So that's about one and a half. That's a very significant range. We're seeing bullishness in the Qs, seeing bullishness in the Dow. Uh, we're going to switch up some of these lower end ones here. We're going to get into some of our mega cap tech and just see who's going on. So we got Amazon in the middle. Apple to the left. Microsoft to the right. To the left, to the left. Everything you own in a box to the left. Get out of here, Microsoft. Waiting for that to load up. Okay, Microsoft being a big push, but look at this. I mean, this this is this is Algo's running the biz over here. It might even be on the spy chain. So yeah, so this is that bullish kind of sentiment. And why was my sentiment bullish? Because the options chain was so bearish. And these people are getting wiped out right now. We hit that 415 level. Um, still showing strength in volume. We're 41 minutes into the trading day so far. And lots of strength sitting on that spy right now. And that's that level, the 4 15, 32. That's that level we established earlier. I think, unless I'm just, I may maybe have a hundred numbers going in my head and they all start sounding the same. <laughs> four foot, four fifteen thirty. I thought I laid that one out. Let me double check. Yeah, it was always oh, four fifteen. No, no, no. What's this one here? I hate how it does that. Can you please get out of my way? Why can't I read that number? You know? Weeble's got some work to do on their interface, but it's not it's not bad. That's the one hour chart right now. Now we're zooming back into the 15 second chart just to keep you with me. Volume's still there. Then we'll check if any questions come in. GDX broke double top too. Ooh. All right. All right. That's super bullish for metals commodities in general. Um, at least short term, right? Recovery. Recovery style. Like, that, that commodities have, have been hit pretty severely here. Now, I wanted to fade that right there, but I'm a little bit busy. All right. So the 4.15.37 ended up being a level. Let's see what we do with this level. Patience. Coming in on 45 minutes into the day and it's testing its top for the day. It wants to see if it can keep going. And one of the things, so we were so bearish for so many days that I really didn't expect just two days of, of negative trading to to shut the bears and shut the bulls down and that's why i think we can we could expect a you know run like this to the positive section right now usually um percentage wise after a run like this we'll consolidate here for a little while usually that doesn't mean today is a usual type of day um especially considering that so many variables at play right now um I'm going to pull up uh, TLT 
instead of the DAO right over here because I just want an update. All right, all right, price up on that. All right, so I'm gonna go. You guys keep an eye on the charts right here. I'm gonna double check that that update on the yield curve. Uh, I just wanted to get an update. We reviewed it in pre-market. I just want another lit market um, action uh, to help me understand its direction for the day. Um, it's loading up right here. Bear with me just a moment here. Okay, what's the time on this? All right, so here I'll show you what we've got here. Okay. See this uh, trading action for the day here? And when we got up in the morning and started looking at this, it was right around 8 o'clock. Um, we were down point thirty-two, so 32 bips to the negative. And uh, we're pulling up on that, getting into... We, we had a nice run all morning, right? And that's, we were seeing that, that bullish sentiment there. And we've just basically pulled back from that here. And that's what we're, we're seeing when we look at TLT, uh, which is top right. All right, that's interesting. All right, now we need to look at Dixie. Yeah, see, we were ranging out right there, consolidating right at this level after that. I'd probably say when the first hour of trading, after this type of bullish run during bearish sentiment, 80% of the time it'll do this. That's a guess, right? So 75, one and four, uh, three and four. Um, it'll, it'll, it'll do this and then break back down. Um, it, it can break to the upside, but it's just one of those swing type of dates, you know. So we will see right now, staying right in that range. Be patient with any of your trades right now because it's still early on the day. Remember, we're only 46 minutes in and there can be new lab levels to be established, right? I uh, can be incorrect and this could just be a consolidation point. We can continue to break up and we could break up almost as much as we just ran. We have room for that. Right, um, and uh, it could be just a stop along the road because there was resistance at 4:15:30, which we identified earlier, and they're they're kind of working out that resistance and and seeing if they can switch that into support or if the bears come in and say, oh hell no, and and bounce us out. <sighs> Take it easy. Yeah, yeah, this feels like a breakdown to me. I got to tell you, I got to tell you. And so what I will do is I will trade this now. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna sell straight up at market 10 spy on my paper trading account and we're gonna fade it I I think there I think this trade is okay I think it's an okay trade all right we'll we'll um see what we get for a, a buy-in at market right now because looks like I could have been a little bit earlier with that but I didn't want to rush it and all right let's take a look and see what kind of fill price we actually got on that before we decide about stop losses and everything like that oh it's still working still hasn't filled that's a little bit annoying on the paper trading accounts they they tend to do that they tend to not fill. They have kind of like a standard fill time so that it doesn't just insta fill. I just, I find that strange because it's not filling. It's not, we're not hitting, we're not tapping the bid or the ask. So, um, yeah, that's one of those things. But you're paper trading, right? Like you, you know what happened. It's okay. Um, and if I had placed that trade 
on a on a lit um, brokerage account, it would have been much more instant, much more instant. All right, so let's get on into the 15 second chat. Zooming on into our price action, we had it. We had that go right into our favor and then bounce off uh, the average price. I ended up getting in on on that through the paper trading account was 415.12. I'd much prefer the um, 415.30 range, just like I mapped out in my head. Um, but that's what we got right there. So I have to double check on my dog. We're gonna let that trade play out and my stop loss very tight stop loss on this is going to be a manual stop loss for me at the 415 38 range super super tight stop loss um, part of the reason why i can get away with that is because it's kind of already a little bit broken into my favor uh, but right now we're tapping off of the uh 50. is that the 50 or is that the vwap band that's a vwap band That's part of it. I'm going to let this trade play out. Check on my dog real quick. You guys rock on. I'm going to double check if there's any questions before I bounce. Yeah, we opened some call spreads on TLT for end of year. Thoughts. All right. End of year, yeah. Um, yeah. Not bad. Not bad. I like it. I like it for year end. I like it. Yeah, Neto member. I like it. All right. So, we, like I said, I got to run and go check on my dog real quick, but I'm just to keep an eye on this trade here. Um, we've, we've kind of broken down. I think it's, it's roughly, I'm roughly flat on that trade right now for the day. Um, I'm not seeing the volume that I would need to see to think that this trade's going to go too much against me, even though it, it, we've just seen a, a you know a bounce off of um, a key 50 candle level. Uh, I'm not seeing enough volume to really let that break down. So I'm going to let this play out, establish itself a little bit more. We may be ranging for a little while, and for me that's okay because this isn't an options trade, it's just a short. And I will be right back, enjoy everything, and... Uh, make sure you bring in your questions up for me when I get back.
Everybody do that dance, do that dance, baby. All right, how are we doing, people? Any questions come in for me? Yep, just that TLT conversation, very cool. All right, microphone check, mama, microphone check. All right, so we're seeing that that come back into favor in here for the trade. Now, is it going to break down over its 50 candle moving average? Looks like it wants to. How's volume? Volume's still low. And what will invalidate this trade for me and, and bring me out? So I'm going to actually kind of manually adjust my stop loss right now. And I like where we're at right now for a, a quick in and out trade. So let's see, 14.76. It came back up to that. I just be on out. Right there, boom, boom. And you see on, on Weeble, the paper trading of placing an order is very, very simple. This is another aspect. I don't find this particularly realistic um, for any um, given retail trader um, to trade like this. In fact, it's almost a little bit too easy to get hit with pattern day trader and how easy it is to work the active trade unit. You can see the active trade column in the bottom um uh, bottom right, excuse me. I'm actually going to check to see if my fat head is in the way. Oh, yep. It's right here. Right behind me. <laughs> That's the one. There's another ordering system and another place ways to place an order here in the bottom middle. You can see this order entry and you'd start here and click your new order. And this is where you can kind of do that multi-leg or multi-trade kind of stat. Get all your trades booked up here and and plug them into execute as you as you'd like or all at once really this doesn't give you individual um, order execution on this and so that's why a lot of people end up kind of in the active trade section and that can just kind of become a little bit too much of a video game right all right so I'm gonna clear this trade off right here all right I don't often use that unless I have a very specific trade I want to make and right now we have an opportunity to range out here because we're at a, a key level for me um, in terms of this particular trade so I am going to um, back out of my spy short right now slap the market uh, price on that again that's not something I would do in in a in a real money live money um, scenario I'd definitely be um, uh, working on you know slapping the ask or the bid or, or, or you know like really really honing in on my buy and sell prices it's really key uh, but just wanted to get through a, a trade with you and we got to a key level uh, you could see the difference between if you were with me in the first five minutes and I, I said there was this kind of gut leaning me to a big you know up if I had bought right there I'd be um, good in the bullish section I'd have been good on the day but you could see that psychologically I wasn't making the right choice and so that wasn't fitting into my strategy so then when I actually waited for my level when I actually went to make the trade I felt a lot more comfortable the trade went in my direction reversed out um, against me but came back to a level I felt comfortable with right and that's why I was able to ride that out that's part of the that's part of the trade you want to make one that is easy on your psychology and and um, it's the setup that we're really talking about. It's really not the trade. It's the setup to the trade um, that gave me that strength and that confidence. And that's what you want to have with every trade. And if you don't have it, if it's not in your, if it's just pumping from your heart and it's not in your gut, then um, take a break. Take a, take a second to make sure you're right. Now, you can see that we're looking at all the mega cap techs who are pulling back as well. They also, each one of them had certain um, levels of resistance that were significant for me. So when you can start seeing them, that's why I always watch with six charts, even though that can be a little bit distracting. If you really want to zoom in um, to your levels, you want to just stick to your one, your one chart layout. But um, I like the six chart layout because it kind of gives you an overall um assessment of what's going on now we are breaking down we're showing real weakness and the thing about that breakdown you can see there's a little boom boom 
volume candle in on that breakdown, right? So whereas I pulled out because we were establishing a level and there wasn't really the volume that I wanted to see, and that volume could come in at any time to kind of go either direction, I decided, all right, most likely we're going to range in here somewhere. I've got my trade. I'm out. I'm going to wait for my next setup. That's what I'm going to do. All right. And so it is trying to break out, break down. It really, really is. But there's plenty of bears. I, excuse me. There's plenty of buyers out there um, that are, are willing to take this uh, run a little bit further. I think they want to say hello to 420 on the spy, but I don't know. I don't know. You might us just end up needing an extra minute on that one. At least today. At least today. We'll see what um we'll see what Wednesday does for us. Alright, we just finished the first hour of trading day. And we got an hour in extra. I have some research I need to gather for a particular um, topic I want to break down that's not on the live stream. So I think I'm going to get to work on that. I just want to, I'll take another five minutes or so um, with the morning trading hours and just let me know if there's any questions, anything that you're, you're thinking about leading into the rest of the day of trading. Um, I will be back for power hour, power hour, hour. I don't like that. I got to come up with a better slogan. Uh, working on it and um, but at least we got to do one trade um, in the one hour you know that's how I am I'm not a, a, a prop desk type of guy and um, and I, I, I just feel it's a little bit more of a responsible way um, to show new traders um, how they can be successful with this so um, that's that I'm gonna go check over the comments like I said <laughs> TT. Yes, the answer is yes. TT, the answer is yes. TT is asking if people buy limit orders lower than the market price, can that drive the price action downward even if there is a lot more inflow versus outflow for buy orders? It can't. The price is de determined by the um, uh, kind of an algorithm that determines the difference between the bids and the asks. So any bid that gets hit, like in your example here, that would be a hit that would affect it. Right. Um, but we're talking about nanosecond price variances here. So we're just taking this one snapshot of this one trade in this one moment. And that, that moment that that bid was hit, it actually brought the price down. You know, whether it was for a second while well, the inflows are coming in and out and in and out. And we don't need to see nearly the trades that you want to see. You want to see what tick by tick looks like. If you haven't seen that, check this out. So this is every trade coming in. That's what tick by tick means. All right. You can see. <laughs> so that's every trade. So every trade's affecting the price. Some trades are hitting the ask. Some are slapping the bid. Some are finding the range in between. That's market. That's when you enter that market order. But this is every buy and sell. It gets crazy, right? I'd prefer to watch it here than on the level two order books. Personally, let me know if any of you guys like the level two order books. I don't. I think it's another thing that'll make you a little crazy. And, uh, you know, because when the data is streaming in that fast, your heart starts pumping with the data and you start getting into it and you start thinking this is kind of a video game and it's not. We're here to make money, not lose money. And if it's not the right setup, you can wait. In a video game, you just die and start over again. Here, you just run out of portfolio money and you got to go back to work at Starbucks. So... <laughs> So you can see, yeah, absolutely. That is how the price is determined. Rock on. Any other questions, guys? I'm going to wrap this up and get some research done. Remember, if you need to know how to tie that half wins or not, you want to get that for your next interview, that is the knot of champions. Trust me. Take that baby out. She's pretty. 
funny enough, I, I told you I live in Costa Rica. I came to Costa Rica 10 years ago. Um, it was actually uh, about, you know, it's only four years removed from the um, 08 uh, downturn and Occupy Wall Streets and quantitative easing and bailouts of the banks and September 15th Lehman Brother moments. It was actually only six years after I left finance in general. So I was a person that was heavily affected by my um career in finance which was roughly about six years and when i learned you know I, I was an insider and so when i when you know like the like the cloth is uh you know the what is it what do they call it like the the um when you start learn basically when you start learning how it really works and what they're really doing and how the market mechanics work and everything you realize it's a big sham and when you see the manipulation, like what happened to us leading into um, 2008 with um, collateralized debt obligations, those are the CDOs. I was working for a hedge fund company that was trading those and not on the, not in the bad way. They were trading them because everyone was trading them. They weren't the people selling them and bringing them to market. They weren't market making them, uh, but poof. I could see very clearly it was not good. One of my jobs was to be a fund accountant, so I got to see all the trades every single day for the hedge funds. And you, you watch these things over and over and over again. You start getting a bead for how this whole thing works, right? And I was heavily affected by it because I'm mostly what the way you'd consider me is like I'm a I'm a blue collar guy, I come from a blue collar family, and I went to a white collar world and learned all about it, and it affected me. Because I know there are a lot of people that don't have the education that's that's really necessary in order to to really grow wealth and and get beyond uh, either a nine to five job or just a small business that re never really gets off the ground. These type of things, th it's possible to use time tested strategies that billionaires use all the time on us regular average Joes. And we can establish our own wealth growth as well. And I've, I've learned that over the years, and I understand a lot more about um, the significance of my feelings on it as opposed to just uh, trading the market the way the market's supposed to be, playing the game the way the big boys play it. No, there's other, there's other scruples that can be involved. And, um, oh, look, my, my ticket stream's down. But oh, watch this. I think it comes right on back up. If I pull that, bring that, that should reload. Um, or maybe it's uh, coming in from actually that could be uh, Wall, Wall Street Journal's uh, feed not feeding us that might be that case but alright people so hope you like that breakdown I really appreciate you guys all just chilling and rapping with me if you want to um, keep on the chats for a little while let me know otherwise I'll shut the stream down so I can get to work bringing you more fantastic details and information and um thank you guys i really appreciate it i really, really appreciate you guys hanging out with me rapping about the stocks it's uh it's a joy really all right y'all rock on don't get yourselves in too much trouble now for the record i'm done trying to make y'all comfortable That's right. for the record you ain't trying to grow any stuff for you That's right. for the record lab on me going all the way, all the way. for the record ain't trying to link no time